Hello, hello, hola mi gente, welcome back to Walk Around Puerto Rico. My name is Daniela and this is Hannah. And today we'll be talking about the visual arts of Puerto Rico, including crafts and murals. Um, a little intro, eh, La Sanse is a big festival back in the island where uh, an entire weekend is dedicated to just being outside in Old San Juan, enjoying good food, live music, and where artists go meet um, together, set up some kiosks and um, expose and sell their art. Um, it tends to be very cultural infused art and some not, definitely. Um, but yeah, this little video will be linked below and it can sort of give you the feel of what I'm talking about. It's very much fun, live music and these folkloric demons that we'll be talking about a little further in this presentation. So feel free to pause the screen and check out that video just so you have a little image before we keep talking about um, this festivity, La Sanse, which is so important, so much fun. So a little bit of La, La Sanse, during the 50s, a parish priest of La Portacelli, um, Father Juan Manuel Madrazo, he originated these festivities called La Fiesta de la Calle San Sebastián, or how we modernly call it La Sanse, to raise money for the repair of these church and celebrate the saint San Sebastian. Um, he transferred out of the church and the tradition kind of fell dormant until a group of neighbors revived it in the 70s. And since then, La Sanza has grown into Puerto Rico's biggest festival and it's a hub for crafts, music and food. Um, right there in the bottom picture, you can see me and my friend um, a couple years back pre-COVID times, enjoying La Sanse, being so happy to be there, posing with a vejigante. Um, do you want to go, Hannah? Yeah. Um, so in the uh, in La Sanse, artisans like, gather all around in Old San Juan's plaza. So it's called uh, uh, Fiestas de la Cal San Sebastian because that's the street that it originally people would march down but it's grown so much more than that um so throughout old san juan in these old plazas artisans will be there showcasing and selling their many different um handmade handicraft objects and a lot of these people have like really high quality work like they put their all their training and expertise and like just in imbue these objects with such beautiful energy um so some examples are jewelry wood carving sculptures engravings paintings and more uh and then so that's during the day but then after sunset people start to party in different bars and restaurants and there's concerts live music available in different parts of the city as well it's a lot of fun so a little bit about the Vejigante. So this is the folkloric demon I mentioned before. Um, it's a handcrafted object. Uh, and many of these handcrafted objects like represent either the island's natural beauty, its people, or like these uh, traditions and myths and legends that are told. Um, some elements include the Taino and the Spanish and the African. Um, and this fusion of these different cultures, like we talked about before, is what gives Puerto Ricans its unique personality, but it also influences heavily on what we produce. So you can find musical instruments, masks, carved wooden scenes, furniture, drums, and many more handicrafted objects in this um, event. Um, and this most iconic one is the Vejigante, which is the most renowned folkloric demon in Puerto Rican culture. And its significance comes from the wearable piece of art that unites these three cultures. Um, it has a little bit of backdrop where the Spanish came and pushed the Moors off. So it has like this, um, predecession in like Spanish land. 
Um, so they would like honor the Saint Sebastian, like go in the streets dressed as demons to like um, push the Moors away. So over time, these processions and aspects were brought to Puerto Rico and then they were added the concept of bomba and plena, which is the music. And um, so these people would dress with the caretas, which are the masks, and they would dance to the beats of these musics. Um, and yeah, just like play jokes on people um, <laughs> and be all fun and stuff. And everybody stops and dances with them in La Sanse. So Hannah, do you want to introduce the project? Yeah, you can make your own uh, Vejante mask. Um, I made mine. It was really a lot of fun. Fortunately, I don't have it with me right now, but we will link this in the uh, description below. It's so much fun. I, I'm kind of obsessed with these masks. Um, <laughs> but like, just, yeah, have fun with it. Like you saw, the really vibrant, lots of colors, whatever patterns you want. Like, if you want to do a different pattern in each horn, like, go for it. Um, yeah, make make this uh, the big menacing demon or maybe a conish demon, anything that you <laughs> want. Um, and yeah, it only requires like uh, scissors and colors, whatever, you know, markers, coloring pencils, so forth. And then if you would like to cut it out and then put it on a popsicle stick for you to wear, um, that popsicle stick and glue. And uh, yeah, you can pause for those steps definitely download this and have fun yeah. with it yeah and share the pictures that, of the mask that you come up with those are always fun to see so there's this other big cultural event um in the island in the area of santurce which is called santurce es Ley. and basically um this area is known for its vibrant art scene and nightlife before um before this though, uh, definitely it was a more like rundown area. So the art scene has definitely like given it a boost. Um, this, this murals um, activity started in 2011 in the street Serra by Alexis Busquets. And it features especially chosen muralists from around the world to make buildings their own canvas. And visitors can check them out in tours during the day. Um, and when it gets dark, they can enjoy like live music and drinks from and food from local bars and restaurants. Um, so muralists can only paint during these organized festivals. So sometimes you will see some unfinished products, but this happens every December. So maybe we'll come back and like either start a new or finish the project. And it's pretty cool to see. So Santa Se Isle celebrates artistic empowerment. Mm -hmm. So with not only bringing in, uh, you know, uh, international artists and such, the murals all throughout, they will address issues and concerns of Puerto Rico, keeping it super local and, you know, really grounded in the place where where uh, the murals are situated at. And it really does serve as a way to revitalize the area in a way, um, because instead of like abandoned buildings, there's these colorful, huge artworks all around. Um, but revitalization, same as how it is in the U.S., is a tricky subject because it tends to displace people who are living in an area that may need to need or could do well with some revitalization. Um, so, yeah, like just considering that nuance there. Um, so Busquet was interviewed by Bienvenidos and uh, they say... We painted murals and lots of people arrived. We noticed that we could change this neighborhood that was extremely abandoned. So it also brought people there and uh, kind of woke up the space again. Yeah. So we're gonna present some artists as well that have been doing um, 
these murals. Colectivo Morivivi is an all women artistic collective um, that seek to use their mural arts as activism. Um, a quote um, directly from their site is, our work is about democratizing art and bringing the narratives of Puerto Rican communities to the public sphere to create spaces in which they are validated. So think about, you look at these two murals and think about what they can mean. Like um, the one on the left, it, it says, I set the wolves, which means raise your voice. There's a lot of hands going up. Um, and then the sign in the back says, we're done with promises. So this really goes into the narrative of like, um, we want more than just a promise. We want action. We want to see results of these promises. Um, yeah, think about what promises have been made that like don't have haven't been like completed or like you can think about how to raise your own voice the second mural um we had a lovely discussion on what it could mean yeah. um it was sort of alluding to this concept of revitalization like bringing back to life so think about that and think about what it could mean as well like apply it to your own circumstances and big <laughs> sorry <laughs> Figure out what it can mean for you. <laughs> and Hannah will present Hector the Protector. Yes. So Hector the Protector isn't necessarily a mural, but he came to be as associated with Santa Isle. Um, and he's made by Thomas Dambo, who is a Danish sculpture artist based in Copenhagen. Um, Hector the Protector is on the edge of the island. He was originally designed throwing rocks at anyone who would, would come up to try and hurt hurt the island. So that again it is closely tied to Puerto Rico, and you know it's a precious place and should be protected. But unfortunately, Hector could not protect uh, from Hurricane Maria, and Hector was also knocked down. So then uh, Dumbo returned to the island afterwards to rebuild it and gave uh, it a lantern instead. So Hector has learned from his violent ways and instead illuminates the island, warning any future hurricanes to steer clear from this place. Um, and, yeah, and this sculpture was built using recycled wood and old trash cans. And the people of Culebra, where it's uh, placed, helped out as well. So it was also a collaborative effort. That's awesome. Yeah. Hector, um, well, this is Hector the Protector, but Thomas Dembo's work was also featured in Santur Sesle in that area. Um, we'll definitely link his Instagram page so you can see the rest of his work. Super cool. Um, the one that was in Santur Sesle, he was like smashing a car. <laughs> which I think is pretty cool. <laughs> and, but yeah, it's awesome to see all these artists collaborating and just creating spaces that are so rich visually. Um, finally, this is 78 Pueblos and Una Bandera, which means 78 municipalities and one um, flag. This project started in 2016 by Hector Colasso. And after, after he had been doing some internal tourism and he realized that he could create um, his own tourist spots by bringing um, these murals and bringing beauty to each municipality in the island. So um, you can actually download um, some travel routes to check out these different murals. Um, which are pretty fun, like, it's like almost like a scavenger hunt. <laughs> um, for him, it was not, it was not just about painting the flag, but it was also about fomenting patriotic pride in Puerto Ricans and letting tourists know that we love our island. <laughs> um, there's a quote here that I translated. Um, it says that the idea is to value our streets, beaches, rivers, mountains, our people, and our history. Educate ourselves of what is Puerto Rico to grow and be better. 
It's really nice. Yeah, and we'll also link a, there's a guide as well to all uh, the flags all across the island uh, below. Yes. And that's it from us today. Next week, we'll be talking about the music genre, reggaeton, where how did it come about, and some of the stars on the scene. So that'll be fun. Stay tuned, and we'll see you all next class. Bye. Bye.